If you're watching this video, you probably know how to factor this trinomial. Maybe you even know a few different ways of factoring this trinomial. Personally, when I factor trinomials, I find two numbers that add to give me the middle term while also multiplying to get the final term. Negative two and negative three will satisfy both of these conditions, so I've successfully factored this quadratic if I write my expression in this way. So that's factoring quadratics. But how would you factor a cubic? You can wrestle with common factoring or grouping, but both of these strategies will get you nowhere. Enter the factor theorem. The factor theorem says that if I sub in a number, call it b, into a function, and I get zero, x minus that number must be a factor of my original function. Think about the quadratic we just factored. Subbing in two and subbing in three make the function equal to zero. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, princess. So based on what the factor theorem says, x minus two and x minus three are both factors of this trinomial. It turns out we can use the same logic to factor polynomials of degree three or higher. So simply put, here's the strategy. Start by looking at the constant term of your function. Ask yourself, what are the factors of the constant term? In the case of this example, the factors will be one, two, three, and six, and their negative counterparts. You can find these factors by simply dividing six by any of these numbers and seeing that it is divisible. Next, we want to strategically substitute these factors into the original function until we get zero. Now the word strategic is key here. This requires a little bit of mathematical intuition, or as I like to call it, mathematic. I know that I can rule out six and negative six just by recognizing that if I sub in six or negative six and raise it to the power of three, I'm gonna get either 216 or negative 216, and there's really no way that adding two times six squared is gonna get me anywhere close to zero. So I can pretty much throw that option in the garbage. I find the most success when I start with one and negative one. For some reason, it seems like this is always the successful option. Now this requires a pretty good understanding of bed mass, and it can be done very quickly if you're good at mental math. If not, you can use your calculator by simply typing in what you see here. But if I start by subbing in one, you'll see that I do not get zero. That means that according to the factor theorem, x minus one is not a factor. So let's try subbing negative one into the function. You can see here, I do get zero. And according to the factor theorem, x plus one must be a factor. Now for this next part, if you aren't up to speed on synthetic division, check out this linked video before continuing as I won't go into detail about this process here. Suffice it to say, synthetic division is necessary for factoring polynomials of degree three or higher. Polynomial long division will also work, but like the name suggests, it is long and it is very easy to make mistakes. So to use the synthetic division process, what I do is take the coefficients of my original function and I write them out in this table. I take the constant term of my factor, in this case one, and I write it here. Now the synthetic division process looks like this. I take the first coefficient, bring it down, I multiply it by the constant term of my factor, and I write the result here. One times one is one. I then subtract two minus one to get one, and I repeat this process. One times one gives me one. I subtract negative five minus one to get negative six. I multiply negative six times one, put the result here, and I subtract negative six minus negative six to get zero. Now the fact that I get zero here should be intuitive. Remember, x plus one is a factor, so I really should not have a remainder. I should be able to divide this polynomial by this factor cleanly to produce this expression. This says my factor x plus one times one x squared plus one x minus six. Again, I'm not going into detail into the synthetic division process here. Do check out the linked video if you're not sure what's happening. The last thing we need to do is factor the resulting polynomial. I got x squared plus x minus six when I use synthetic division, but as it turns out, that is factorable. I can use the same process from the beginning of this video to find two numbers that add to get one while also multiplying to get negative six. As it turns out, those numbers are negative two and positive three, which takes me to the fully factored form of my cubic. Now, if you wanted to check your answer, you could multiply these three binomials by each other and check that you do in fact get the original cubic back. This is fully factored form as opposed to this form, which would really just be considered partially factored. So that's how you can use the factor theorem to factor cubics. If this video helped in any way, feel free to like and subscribe for more mathematical chaos. And as usual, thanks for watching.